point of living my life helping others in those bad circumstances despite my own upbringing. Right. And determinism would suggest that that's not a possibility. I'm a diagnosed sociopath. I have medically proven rage issues. I am an outlier. I've had, I, I had to get retested because the courts were convinced I tricked psychiatrists because I'm so much of an outlier. So there has to be some measure of free will. I, I know vets who've literally gone through torture and didn't break. And if there's no measure of the ability to exert will over action or choice, if we're only going to do what we are intended to do, what our DNA and our senses tell us to do, then there is no possibility for us to rise above to become exceptional unless we're born to be exceptional. I have no idea what's going on. So why do you think we have free will? I think that free will is something that can be if you make it a thing. Like, I don't even per se believe in the term free will. I don't like that term. I believe we have choice and the ability to use, to focus our will, our sense of identity and self to a purpose. Free will as a word makes no sense. Well, it's two words. Um, okay. I don't even know if we disagree. I'm not saying we disagree. I'm saying the terminology and that at times you show kind of blatant bias. Like you're obviously a very educated, intelligent person who's done a lot of effort to self-educate. And admittedly, you listen to a lot of really ignorant, arrogant people. <laughs> and I can get that would be very frustrating and it would cause you to draw lines at times. But, like, at times you just kind of come across as this absolute, this doesn't exist. But much of the... I have good reason. I, I have very good reasons for thinking the earth is not flat, that there is no free will, I agree. that evolution occurs. I agree. So, uh, I'm a fan. I, I, I'm saying that there are some arguments you have made that make no definitive sense like. because we have proven historically that it is the exceptional few of us who are often put to death for being exceptional that rise above and move us forward as a species what? like that, 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 has, that has nothing to do with free will it, it it's the cho choice to follow ambition to rise above to go against what society status your betters in life what not tell you to do you those are choices you make that go against self-preservation and that says nothing about whether or not free will exists. Based on the idea of full preservation, determinism is fueled by survival and experience. No, and choosing what to go that, against them. What does that even mean? Determinism is fueled by self-preservation. Yes, that makes zero sense. No, because determinism is based on the study of masses and their choices. It's how, as you pointed out, politicians and marketing work is by studying the masses, relatable choices, repeated, repetitive choices. Yes, I'm aware determinism, that's, that's actually not how that works. That's predeterminism, but okay. That every action has a consequence. Determinism is based on the idea that there is some precursor for everything. Um, sure. You literally were explaining that. That thought neurons going backwards. Yeah. That's how we make choices. That is determinism. Okay. I, the core I think that, of I think our that... genetic makeup is to survive, to procreate, to continue the species. Yes, and for example, a mother that sacrifices herself for her children is is engaging in that, even though she exactly. is and destroyed. No, 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 no. Even no, even though she's destroyed in the process, her genes live on because she protected her. Okay, but there's but there are mothers who yes. choose not to hold on. But, well, no, they don't choose not to. I wouldn't say because that mother that self sacrifices, that that 
propensity, that behavior, it's all, if you ask me, mediated by our biology, which is merely chemistry, which is merely physics. So there's nothing in there for free will to uh, come in and and loosen or tighten any bolts or do anything. But what about the people who don't? They're wired a different way. Or everybody's biology is distinct. Except that we have evidence that it's not. There's less than a 1% variance between most humans. It's like point, less than 0.2 in most cases. Which would mean that everybody's biology is distinct. If, if, if two lines are... What the hell? <laughs> Sorry, notification. <laughs> Um, so anyways, I stand by what I said. Okay, but like in chat, they just said, you know, you're not a clone, except that we've done cloning, and cloning has a similar level of variance to propagation because of damaged or, or randomly mutating DNA. Yes, every everybody's biology is different. Right, but... I, identi- if we can't make a identical, perfect clone of a single individual or animal, if it does not behave in the same way, if it is not, even though we put everything in there that was in the original, then experience other parts of our existence play a part in what we do, why we do it, the choices we make. Uh no, so what I think you're saying is if we had two people that were cloned or identical twins or whatever, the fact that they will not be exactly the same means that they must be choosing um, what makes them different. No, no, but- no, 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 no. No, see, I am saying that you have the ability to make different choices regardless of what you've experienced, what you've been put through. That, that is not a, that's not the opposite of what I was saying by any means. I'm not saying it's the opposite. I was saying then you're why being did you say serious. no and then say that? Like say you, you, you interrupted me, told me I was wrong, right. and then no, said right, right. something irrelevant. No, I, this whole thing started with me saying you show bias about these things and not clarity. And I don't think that's true of you and I wanted to talk about it why you draw these hard lines because some of these things like in my own experiences are different then either give me an example or tell me why you think we have free will or something okay like I have said now for the third time I don't like the words free will I believe we have the ability to choose and to exert willpower to drive ourselves to a goal that goes in opposition of survival, better interest, instinct. Do you or do you not believe in free will? As identified throughout theology and and mythology? No, not in those terms. I believe in choice and willpower. But the term used, coined, is free will. I am way more into the determinist mind- mindset. I just don't like that so many determinists exclude the possibility to go against the structured norm of what determinism tells them it should be. Determinism has never studied in great depth people who have undergone horrific levels of torture and abuse and then gone against their nature. Okay, what would that, what would that, so the people have been made martyrs of and experienced hardships and persevered nonetheless and knew they were innocent and if they just confessed, they'd be fine, but they decided to double down and suffered a horrendous death, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, they made a choice and chose to stick to it regardless of freely cost yeah freely what do you mean freely 
did they make the choice freely? I don't believe in free will, but I think people make choices. Right, and determine, define your version of freely in this state, in this argument. Like without coercion, without threat of death, like what kind of freely? Um, basically going to the, like it sort of has, jeez, oh, okay guys. Hold on, I'm gonna bring somebody up. Um, one one example would be no antecedent cause or that whatever is causing the person to make the decisions is not a bottom-up, physical, determined succession series of events. Right. You have to like imagine it's some sort of top... Them. You'd have to imagine some sort of top-down thing as if consciousness changes the structure of the body, the mind, controls the thoughts or whatever, rather than the other way around. And I think that there's really no good argument there. No, I think that we don't fully understand the brain nearly as well as we'd like to. We have tons of evidence that shows us things. People get hit in the head and learn, suddenly know a new language that they could never speak before, can play the piano, nice, and they've nice. never been able to. Like, we don't know why these things happen. So, um, Ascender, I've been listening for a while. I think I kind of know what your issue with uh, determinism is, right? So I, I've come up with um, a philosophical stance I call chaotic causality. It's kind of weird, but basically it's the sense of, it, it's epistemological issue. So we still have the causal chain. Everything's still linked and everything is determined to happen. It's just the fact that we don't see the links in the chain and it looks weird. It looks chaotic and it looks random and like there could be freedom of choice and everything but it's entirely just still part of the causal chain. We just can't see certain aspects. Okay, but that's no different than faith. No, we can't. I cannot see the bigger no, picture, so it's still this. It's not faith. So, as Ender, it's basically the same idea as this. Do you know for 100% certainty that the sun is going to rise tomorrow? Barring some cataclysmic event, yes. You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that. So you, you don't have the the object sense of like the capital O uh, objective reality. You don't know that. There could be a black hole that got beelined out of its solar system and hitting right for That's us. That's a cataclysmic event that was accounted that I just accounted for. I said barring that. Yeah, but then you don't know that the sun's not going to rise tomorrow. Yeah, you like don't know that. your answer is kind of yeah, unless it doesn't. Right, but it, that's this is, everything. This is where I'm there is that. no order without some measure of chaos. That's the whole point. In order is to create from chaos, to build <sighs> structure. That's why society happens. That's that's it's ender. It, you're literally saying kind of the same thing I'm saying. So let me give you this uh, analogy, right? So have you ever heard of the red door, blue door thing? When it comes to determinism, have you ever heard of that? I haven't read it recently, but it, yeah, it rings a bell. Okay, so uh, I'll give you the analogy. The, the analogy is basically um, I, I walk up upon a red door, blue door. The red door is uh, I choose the red door because I like the color red. So in every possible world in where I like the color red, I was always determined to choose the red door. But somebody comes out and punches me in the face when I choose the red door. So then the next time I want, you know, I come up across a red door, blue door. I now realize that the next time I choose a red door, somebody's going to punch me in the face. But I don't realize that there's a bunch of termites eating the door. And then the door breaks apart the moment I step in the room, the guy comes out and punches me in the face. It looks chaotic. It looks random. But it isn't, because the moment I stepped into the room, it was always determined to happen, and I was going to get punched in the face. Which goes back to my whole, for determinism to be an absolute thing, we would have to live in a simulation. No, we wouldn't have to live in a simulation. Oh, yeah, I forgot you said that. Yeah, because I don't get why that would be. It, so you're saying that me not being... Like all of my criminal relations, me not being a convicted murderer and abuser, all of that that I grew up in is determinism because at some point 
I saw all of that and went, I want to be different. That I saw my mother have a breakdown and said, you will have one child you aren't ashamed of. And that is determinism. Yeah, that was all determined to happen. So because of the fact of what you had experienced, that was always determined in every possible world that you were to come up to that decision. Okay. Now, who determined that? Reality. It's not a who. It's just reality okay, itself. This is, back, this is really back. not much okay. different than asking, well, the hurricane killed my grandma, so that means that something made the hurricane because something had to have taken agency to have taken my grandma's life because no, for what I've, what for what other reason could there possibly be for my grandma to have died of the hurricane you're okay. Again, you're, you're a, a thing you're, a, you're choosing a side you're not okay. In the case of a hurricane, there are weather patterns, there are systems, a volcano, there are tons of things we can identify as precursors. For determinism to work, at some point in time, something caused determinism, right? It, it would just be reality. Ca Everything the in universe. reality is changed by a causal chain. This is all inductive. You, you know okay, what an inductive then, thing is, right? Say what? You know what induction is? I, I still can't hear you very well. I'm sorry. Do you, do you know what induction is? Like, as a process of electricity or temperature, yeah. No, no, no. Induction in terms of philosophy. So philosophy... Oh, yeah, being uh, inducted into like a cult or something, yes. So, like, induction is based off of your experience. It, that's just the simple thing. So everything in which you have experienced has a prior cause. Is that correct? As far as I know it, yes. That's what yeah. I believe. Yeah, so everything has a prior cause. Everything in reality has had a prior cause. So when the hurricane, the, the volcano, all that had a prior cause for it to explode or to start creating a storm. All that was determined based off of a prior cause. That's all determinism is. Everything that has occurred up to the present has been determined because of prior causes. We have no decisions in that. That's it. That goes again back to the whole like nothing's your fault. Uh, yeah, kinda. Pretty much. Yeah, that do that we... does not sit with me. I. <laughs> uh, well, you know, Steve Irwin doesn't blame the stingray, right? <sighs> Right. Right. He doesn't, right? I mean, he's dead, so what do the dead do? Well, yeah, he wouldn't blame the stingray, right? He'd say, oh. No, he'd probably blame himself. He was a good like, guy. Like, when, when Steve Irwin and the stingray meet in hell, then he'll say to the stingray, oh, sorry, I scared you, little buddy. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I don't know how to do an Australian accent. Sorry, I... I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you know, that's what he would say. He wouldn't begrudge the stingray because it was just doing what it's biologically programmed to do. And uh, you're you're just a stingray. So am I. So is this guy. We're all stingrays at heart. Ah, dude, come on. Is it too soon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that one person in chat was right, and I just can't embrace this because I'm a sociopath, and I don't like the idea of the loss of agency. Um, yeah. I mean, when you come to determinism, and you like understand it that it's inductively speaking, that's basically all we've ever experienced. It's kind of like, yeah, it kind of sucks, dude. But it's just kind of it is. It is what it is. Like, you're that's, that's great. I, don't, I don't hold anybody's beliefs generally against them unless their beliefs cause harm. But I just, I don't buy into it personally. I, I can't. Wow. I've, I've had experiences that have suggested to me that it's not absolute. Like what? Like knowing a person who has had their teeth and nails ripped out and been cut and had bones broken, mm -hmm. who hates the very military they were in, 
and never confessed to anything that was a threat to this nation and is maimed and ruined as a person for the rest of their life. Yeah, all those things had a prior cause, right? Yeah, he got caught. Yeah, so his prior cause, all those things occurred. Yes, right? and here's the thing, determinism likes to use causality, but causality goes back to a beginning point where there was a randomness. No, no it doesn't. Yes, it does. I've, I've never heard of it. The idea behind action-reaction, which is the foundation for causality and, and, and interaction, it's the you system by chemical causality process. Causality does not physics. come down to a, a point of randomness. That's so there's a, so there's three legs of the trilemma, right? There's infinite regress. There's primary mover and basically God, that right? Or like a, an eternal being, right? yeah, some sort of omnipresence. So, so in infinite regress does not entail a beginning point. To where everything was random, everything was meant to occur. No, actually, just, infinite regress only shows us that we regress to a point where there's nothing. No, no, there's what? No, it's incoherent. No, what? Nothing is not a thing. Right. It's it's, it's absent. Not a thing. It's incoherent. So, the the thing is, is that if we go back on that infinite regress, there's always going to be a pre-existing thing that was prior to the last causal chain. And then there's going to be something that pre-exists with that thing. So there's going to be something that pre-exists with that thing. And there's going to be something that pre-exists with that thing. And guess what, Azendar? What, guess what pre-exists with that thing? Something Another else. thing. Yeah. So it, it just keeps going. And another one. Right, but again, DJ that's Khaled. hypothetical. It's based off of inductive reasoning. Everything you've experienced has had a prior cause. But why would there not be a prior cause to all other things? Yeah, that's, that's the role of living in any physical reality. There's going to be actionable cause for nearly everything that you can experience that doesn't experience in, on, a, on a spiritual level. That's about the only exception, and even that's kind of wishy-washy because brain issues. I think yeah. we're going to have to table it for now.